Praise the Lord. Our Lord God reigns. And I pray it will reign in your life. It will reign in your family. It will reign in your church. Let the people be glad. Let the earth rejoice because our God reigns. Why don't you stand up in honor to this God that reigns. It will reign in your ministry. It will reign in every locality you go. And Christ with his power will be with you. This year, there is no way for you to fail. This work of God will prosper in your hand. Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the Congress. We thank you for reminding us that whatever may be happening in any locality, in any country, in any situation, we know that our God in heaven is still reigning. And Lord, we pray the people will rejoice. Your people will be glad. This work of God we're doing, and we've been tired before we came. We pray, Lord, as your people are going back, energize them. Empower them. Encourage them. And we pray, Lord, whatever they meet on the way, no man, no woman, no power of darkness will be able to stand before them. You're building a glorious church. We're part of that church. And we're co-laborers with you. We pray that, Lord, this work will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, for all our brothers and sisters that have made this Congress a success. Our leaders, sectional leaders, workers out there, choir, usher, security, electronics, everybody, electricians, all the people, the people preparing our food, all the people, everything they did. And they made this a reality. And we have a Congress as if we never had Congress before. And the preachers to you, Lord, I pray, shower your blessings on them in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, as you are reigning in every life, nobody here will be left out. Let the people rejoice. The joy of the Lord will be our strength. And let the people be glad. We will be glad all through this year. Sadness is gone. Sorrow is gone. Regret is gone. Lord, I pray your people every day, they will expect and they will receive a miracle, a wonder. And then they'll pass on your power and your word unto other people. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. As we come to the close of our Congress this year, we are looking at the message, the glorified Christ and a glorious church. What else do we expect? If Christ is glorified, then his church must be glorious. In fact, he said in Matthew chapter 16, reading there in verse 18, and I say also unto thee that that, that Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm sure you are students of the Bible yourself. And I know that you, are, you know this passage very well. I'm sure you know that when it says upon this rock, I will build my church, you know he was not talking about Peter. You know that for a number of reasons. You know that because Jesus Christ is a rock of ages, cleft for me. And I'm hiding myself in him. And the water and the blood that flowed from his riven side, that's what has been the double cure for me, cleansing me from the guilt and the power of sin. You know that Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone. And it's on that foundation that the church is built because other foundation can no man lay than that is laid which is jesus christ so when it says upon this rock the statement you have made that thou art the christ the son of the living god upon that statement upon this rock 
I build my church, and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, when Jesus came, to he came to save. He came to reconcile men to God. God paid the greatest price possible to redeem and purchase us and then establish the church. The church is God's priority on earth. The most important thing on earth in God's evaluation, in God's plan is the church. The church is a building. That God himself is building. And this building is referred to as a temple. And is a temple for God. And as Solomon built a great temple for God. So the Lord now is building not a physical temple. But a glorious temple. And we are involved in building that glorious temple. The glorified Christ cannot be satisfied will not be satisfied with anything less than a glorious church and you'll be part of it there are three parts to the message number one the plan and the purpose of the glorified christ the plan and the purpose of the glorified christ number two the picture and the power of a glorious church when a church is glorious in god's estimation the picture and the power of a glorious church number three our privilege and pattern in a glorious church we have a privilege to be part of building this glorious church our privilege and pattern in a glorious church number one the plan and the purpose of a glorified Christ in Matthew chapter <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 5 and the Lord revealed from the very beginning and this is the first recorded sermon message delivered by the Lord Jesus Christ and the detail is given to us but in this passage you can see the very plan and the very purpose of Christ the kind of church that he wants it says in verse 13, Matthew 5, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, when we shall it be salted, it is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. And a city set on a hill cannot be hid, neither do men light a candle. And put it under a bushel, for but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. He says, if you want my purpose to be fulfilled, if you want my plan to be realized, here it is. Every member of the church, everyone naming the name of Christ, let your light so shine before me that they may see your good works and then they'll glorify your father who is in heaven his purpose is to build a glorious church in ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 reading from verse 25 husbands love your wives you ought to if you're a real christian Husbands, love your wives. You are disqualified for ministry if you don't love your wife. Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for it. And if Christ gave himself for the church. And he has chosen you now to come and partner with him. Fellowship with him. Labor with him. You need to give yourself. And you give of your very best to the master in building the church that he might sanctify and cleanse it or the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church what kind of church i said what kind of church a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that it shall be holy and without blemish 
very clearly then the plan of Christ from the very foundation of things was to reverse the fall and to make those who are falling short of the glory of God to regain the nature that brings the glory of God back to their lives. His sacrifice, the power of his blood, his word, his grace, the power of the Holy Ghost that he gives to the church. His intercession now in heaven for all who are part of the church. All these, they are for the purpose of making sinners saints. They are for the purpose of transforming lives. They are for the purpose of making Christians salt and light in the world. They are for the purpose of making believers righteous and godly in this present world. They are for the purpose of giving all his followers, all his disciples, the grace and the spiritual strength to live in holiness and righteousness before the Almighty God all the days of their lives. In short, its purpose is to raise up a glorious church, all glorious within. And I pray he'll continue to use you to do it. Don't be tired, you're doing it already. And the Lord is just saying, do more, do more, run faster, preach more, pray more, get this work done, perfect the church, because he gives some apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ until we all come in the unity of faith unto the measure of the fullness of the stature of Christ he wants to build a glorious church and he wants to use you he will use you if the stone which the builders disallow glorious church a glorious church is powerful a glory about how many people three thousand souls they all continued glorious church glorious church they all continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers glorious church and fear came upon every soul outside the church fear came upon every soul they saw the church they saw the unity they saw the glory they saw the power they saw answered prayers they saw uh, they saw signs and wonders they saw how the church was and they said nothing has ever been like this they did the sanhedrin they were highly educated they were the cream of the crop in the country in the nation but they had no power in their synagogue in their temple and then they saw these unlettered people these unlearned people and three thousand joined them now you have three thousand one hundred and twenty and this church as they were at that time they didn't go for any management course they didn't do any administration course they didn't go to any university they didn't talk about they didn't learn about decision making they didn't know about you know the past leaders and plato and socrates and all the leaders of the greek culture they didn't know anything like that all they knew was a glorified Christ. All they knew was the word of the living God. All they had was the power of the Holy Ghost. And they looked at them and they saw how this church was going. Then they feared. They said, this is awesome. This is something. This is terrifying that these people and the un unlettered and the unlearned but the power of the Holy Ghost was upon them and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and all that believed were together and had all things come on and then it says and they sold their possession and, 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 the, and, and their goods and they parted them to all men 
as every man had need. We're talking about people. They didn't even have an accountant among them. The only, you know, the only one that handled the pulse, that's uh, Judas Iscariot, while Jesus was there, is gone. But all these people now, you know, the Holy Ghost came, wisdom came. The Holy Ghost came, power came. The Holy Ghost came, and administrative skill came. The Holy Ghost came, every other thing came to their lives. And as all the things were coming, they didn't have experience of this before. They didn't do this before. And yet, by the power and the incoming of the Holy Ghost upon them, everything was just going in order. Going in order. And they continue, and they continue in daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house they did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart that's a glorious church that's a glorious church and then it says praising god having favor with all people that's a glorious church anywhere they went don't you remember just 50 days ago that they crucified jesus christ don't you remember that just less than two months ago, they rejected Jesus Christ? Don't you remember that just less than two months ago, Peter, John, James, Matthew, all the rest, they were hiding? Don't you remember? This was a despised group. And yet, just within two, three months, and these people came to the Lord, and Jesus started a glorious church praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord added, and the Lord will add to your church. And the Lord added every day, the Lord will be adding. The Lord will be adding. If you are 100 now, you become 200. If you are 300, you become 500. If you are 500, you become 1,000. If you are 1,000, you become 2,000. And if, you are, if we are thousands and thousands and thousands, before we know it, we become millions and millions and millions in Jesus' name. And the Lord added to the church. Not just Dick and Harry. He gave them quality converts. God will give you quality converts. God will give you converts that will glorify the Lord. Converts that will live in righteousness. The Lord added to the church every day, daily, such as should be saved. That's the church. That's the church. And that church was powerful. That church was mighty. Hey, let me show you the power of that early church. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. I I'm reading, you know, verses 1 all through to 11. You know, the devil wanted to bring whatever it is to this new church. To this glorious church. To this beautiful church. And, you know, Anana and Sapphira, eh, eh, they, they wanted to introduce lying, hypocrisy, deception. And then the Lord said, no, no, it's too early to allow that in the church. To preserve the church glorious. They were taking, they were, you know, taking care of. And then it says, Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles were signs and wonders wrought among the people. Are you expecting that same thing? I said, are you expecting that same thing? And they were all with one accord. One accord. Unity. Oh, glorious church. One accord is Solomon's porch. And the rest, and of the rest, does no man join himself to them. And of the rest, does no man join himself to them. They heard the story. Of how God dealt with Ananias and Sapphira. And the witches, they said, no, I will not join that church. Except I'm ready to give up my witchcraft. And the sorcerers, they said, no, no way. I will not join that church. Except I want to give up my sorcery. And the people that were evil, they said, no, because that church, that church, nothing defining can be allowed there. I will not join that church except I'm willing to give up what I have, which is not all right. And of the rest, does no man join himself to them. But the people magnified them. Your local church in that village, the villagers will magnify that church. They will praise that church. Whatever they say, negative, dirty about other churches, when it comes to deeper life in your location, they will say, except deeper life. Except deeper life. 
except deep alive. And then it says, and the believers were the more added. The more added. Before it was just added, added, added. Now, they were the more added. Are you getting ready? Multitudes, both of men and women, in so much that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least, even if Peter is not able to lay hands on them, at the least, even if they are not able to, you know, pray and shout and command, at the least, the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folks, and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were all, and they were healed. How many? I said, how many? Everyone, every one of them, God healed. It will happen. If the ministers and the members of the church will be fully yielded to Christ, and I'm sure you are yielded to Christ, the head of the church, God has enough power. Christ has enough power to make his church glorious before God, glorious before angels, and glorious in the sight of all men. God is able. He will do it. Christ is able. He will do it. And we are able. I said you are able. God is strengthening you. God has prepared you. God has deposited a lot in your life. You will do it. If we can only believe and we're willing and determined to look only unto Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith. We've seen the examples in the New Testament. And we've seen the power of a glorious church as we're going back home. Our determination, our conviction is that as we go back, God is going to use us to raise up a glorious church. And when in at the headquarters there a glorious church, in the state there a glorious church, in the region there a glorious church, in the local government there a glorious church, in the province over there is a glorious church, in the neighboring countries a glorious church, in far away countries, southern Africa is a glorious church, all over Africa where we have this church, glorious church, glorious church, glorious church, and they are bearing testimony, and they say, except deeper life. Everybody does this, except deeper life. Everybody is looking for money except the upper life. Everybody is stealing except the upper life. And then when we all come together, you know, when glorious church, glorious church, glorious church from everywhere, that we have been hearing stories about one another. Glorious, 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 awesome, powerful and mighty. And then we say, all these glorious churches come on now, come together. And they are coming. I said, and they are coming. And then the whole country, they see buses, they see people coming. And then you have this banner on the bus, Deeper Life Bible Church, Glorious Church. And then all the people, they, they, they line the street and they line the road. And they see buses, Glorious Church buses, Glorious Church buses, all coming. And then they are wondering where are they going and we are heading towards ICC. And we're heading towards ICC. And then we get there. And just to see the smile on the faces of the glorious members of a glorious church. And then hear and see the choir. And hear their music. And see that the youth choir, you know, demonstrating and playing. And, you know, just, just do whatever they can do, those young people. With their violin and everything. Children glorious, youth glorious, adult glorious, singing glorious, preaching glorious, praying glorious, church glorious. You will be there. You will be there. Point number three, our privilege and pattern in a glorious church. This is our privilege. My brother, you are here. And you are part of this glorious church. And I pray that your part, your place will not be missing in Jesus' name. In First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2. Reading from verse 7. In First Thessalonians 2, 7. But we were gentle among you. 
These are ministers now. Even as a nurse cherishes her children. To, uh, so being affectionately desirous of you, we well, were willing to have imparted unto you not only the gospel of God, but also our own souls. Because ye were dear unto us. If you are going to build a glorious church, your members have to be precious to you. And the workers have to be precious to you. And all the people supporting you in the ministry, they have to be dear, precious to you. And if something is precious to you, if someone is precious to you, they will know by your attitude to them, by your action to them, by your statements about them, by what you say about them in the public and in the private. And you as pastors, and you are praying that God will use you to build up, raise up a glorious church. Let those members of the churches and the workers and the leaders and the people supporting you, let them be precious, dear unto you. That you are not only giving them the gospel, you are willing to give them your very life. Look at it again in verse 8. So, being affectionately desirous of you. You know, affectionately. When there's affection, you're not be frowning at every member of your church. Frowning at the congregation every time. Oh yes, there are times when things should be corrected. Correct it and move on. And move on. And love your people. Affectionately desirous of you. Well, we're willing to have imparted unto you. The glory, the, the, the gospel of God, not only the gospel of God, but also our own very souls. Because ye were dear, precious, significant unto us. For ye remember, brethren, our labor and travail. For laboring night and day, because we will not be chargeable unto any of you. We preached unto you the, the gospel of God. And ye are witnesses, and God also. How holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. It's your privilege and your calling to perfect the saints. Now, sir, they are going to be glorious, but if God is going to use you as instruments in the hands of Christ to raise up, a glorious church and to allow you to help in the perfecting of the saints then he must do something in us first so that we ourselves were glorious so that our lives are beautiful so that our lives are exemplary because he cannot use sinners to lead other sinners to saintliness he cannot use imperfect ministers to lead members of the church towards perfection. If we are satisfied and we are delighted in our imperfection and we are excusing our imperfection and we are saying, well, nobody can be perfect. That is who I am. Let them take me as I am. Well, we may take you as you are, patient with you, helping you, because we know that you need a lot to even be able to get to heaven. But how will God use you as a co-laborer with him if you are so imperfect and you, you delight in your imperfection, you are satisfied with your imperfection, you excuse your imperfection? No. The more we allow Christ to perfect us, as ministers, the more he will walk through us to perfect his church. That's why Paul said, you are witnesses. And God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. As you know, how we exalted and comforted and charged every one of you. As a father does his children, that ye will walk worthy, and you will walk worthy. That ye will walk worthy of God, who has called you into unto his kingdom and, uh, and what? And glory. And you know this church, uh, this how this how the church, that church was glorious for this cause. Also, we thank God. 
without ceasing. Because when ye received the word of God, which ye heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually walketh also in you that believe. You see, when you preach and the message is believable and your life is also believable and your interaction, everything you do, you know, they, they just, they accept you, then they will accept the message. You are allowing God to work in you, therefore the message you are preaching will work in them as well. I pray the hand of the Lord will be with you. You will not fail. God himself, he will see you through. We're building a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a church that will never be conquered. It's a glorious church. And I pray, should the Lord come before we meet again, we'll meet in heaven in Jesus' name. And I believe there will be stars in your crown. You have a place in heaven. He has gone to prepare a place for you. And he's coming again. That when he has finished, he will take you. Your mansion is glorious. You yourself must be glorious. And then God will use you to lead many, many, many people to heaven. And that day, when I see you over there, I will not see you as you are now. You will be more beautiful. Because you will be glorious. And I will see crowns on your heads. And I will see shining stars in your crown. Tell me, as we are going back home, and as we are going to be ministering to the Lord, will there be any stars in your crown? I said, will there be any stars in your crown? Rise up and tell the Lord, help me, help me, help me to so walk, help me to so walk that I will have my crowns on that day and there will be stars there will be stars in my crown tell the Lord, tell the Lord tell the Lord that you will so walk that by the grace of God you will cooperate with Christ to raise up a glorious church then on that final day when the Lord will be rewarding the co-laborers with him you have a stars in your crowns. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, we thank you very much. Thank you for leading us to this point. Thank you for all that we have learned. Thank you, Lord, because you are using us to build a glorious church. Glorified Christ be exalted, be glorified in our lives, in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, we ask all our weaknesses of the past, all our imperfection of the past, all our unfaithfulness of the past, all our carelessness of the past, oh Lord, forgive and cleanse and make us better, in Jesus' name. The work you have done in our hearts during this Congress, it will be permanent. The power you have given us during this conference, it will be permanent. The vision you have given us during this congress, it will be permanent. The encouragement you have given us during this congress, it will be permanent. You have lifted us up. You have exalted us. So sit together in heavenly places with Christ. Oh Lord, we are praying. Nothing will bring us now. Nothing will bring us now. And Lord, what you have done in us, what you have done uh, for us, you will help us as we go back. That in the church, as we preach, as we pray, as we counsel, as we help, as we encourage, as we do anything, Lord, it will be tending to us, building up the church. Building up the church. Building up a glorious church. And on that final day, when the Lord will come, Lord, we pray. There will be crowns on our heads. 
everybody here, everyone here, whether the people that were here with us on the stage, the people that preach, the people sitting and listening there, and the faithful people standing and keeping everything orderly, those watching over our property while we're here, everybody, everybody here, oh Lord, none of us will miss being together with you and with one another on that final day in Jesus' name. Make us, Lord, permanently part of the glorious church. Lord, I pray that day when we see one another, we'll rejoice that you made us part of a church like this. As your people go back home, Lord, I pray nothing evil will touch them. You'll watch over their vehicles. The blood of Jesus will cover you. The protection of the Lord will be upon you. Even your enemies, they'll be at peace with you. And all your needs, the Lord will supply. The tears of the past and the sorrow of the past will pass like water under the bridge. There'll be a new thing in your life. Every day from now on, heaven will smile on you. And the greatest of it all, on that wonderful day, when the saints go marching in, you'll be among the number. And you will not be an ordinary person just entering heaven empty-handed. There will be multitudes following after you. And there will be stars in your crown. In Jesus' name we pray.